Okay, the, the book's in its fourth edition, and right from the beginning, I inherited a book that was an atlas, uh, and I decided that we needed a textbook, that ultrasound had a, arrived at a stage where people needed to be read in depth if they had a question, you know, what are the pitfalls, what are the artifacts, what are the problems, and then what's the frontiers, what are the new things. And um, so every time we do something, like in this edition, we have added a lot more fetal imaging, sometimes with MR, fetal MR and fetal ultrasound as comparison, because that's the new leading edge, the frontier. Mm -hmm. And that's replaced some of the things that we thought were less urgently needed. Mm -hmm. So we really kept it the same size, but left out things that were sort of so well established people didn't really need an in-depth look at them and added a lot more about uh, fetal imaging. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing we added were some videos that we had never had before. So there's some online, comp there's an online component for it now that has videos. Video imaging, we used to not be able to save. We had to go in the room and see it real time, see what was happening. And now on the, with the packs, they've got enough memory. That was mm. the key. They, uh, they used to do them but not save them. So now we can save them on the packs and we can show them. And it keeps me from having to go back and re-examine a patient. It gives the text the, the way to show me what they saw as it swept instead of just hard copy still pictures. That's great. And uh, That's it great. really is powerful. I think it'll be an increasingly good teaching tool. It's aimed at uh, the resident market in terms of making up, uh, uh, aiming at each thing that there will be normal anatomy, there will be pathology, there will be, and then what's advanced. So I find that people use it all over the world. I hear it everywhere I go, which is really exciting. Mm -hmm. The residents all say that's what got them through boards, yeah. and then the attendings say they have it on the shelf. And ultrasound's actually used more in other countries than in the U.S. It's used more in Canada, more in Europe, more in all the developing countries because it's less expensive. Huh. And it's portable. Well, some of our big machines aren't as portable, but, no. but the uh, disruptive technology of handheld ultrasound is right. moving ultrasound. So let's say you're in Nigeria, you can go out to a patient in a clinic. It doesn't have to be a big fancy hospital. It can be used all over the world. The other thing that the, in fact, the FDA is studying the use of contrast in ultrasound, microbubble mm -hmm. contrast. Um, and people are looking actually at microbubbles as a way to treat tumors. So this is, the Europeans wow. again and the, and the Canadians have approved microbubble contrast and are using it. And in this country there are a few centers uh, that are doing microbubble research. It's actually approved for cardiac imaging. And you think, well, when you put it in a vein, it actually goes everywhere. But you haven't approved it for everywhere else. So the people who use it are doing it with an IRB, with a research approval by the FDA. Uh -huh. And they are working very hard right now. And I think within the next year or two, they'll probably have it approved to use contrast. And it'll dramatically change the use of ultrasound, I think.